Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Best Ever You show here in YouTube format and over on our podcast. If you're listening or watching, we're so glad that you're here with us. I'm Elizabeth Hamilton Garino, and with me is my guest, Alphonsus Obey You Wanna. I got it right. Obey You Wanna. Did I say it right? Yes, definitely. I did. Yay. All right. There's happiness right there. Now, Alphonsus is the, and I could really be doctor. Um, he is the author of this book, The Happiness Formula. And I'm going to put that in there a little bit closer because hope over hunger equals happiness. And we're going to talk all about happiness and your book. And thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, please. Yeah. Um, so you've done a lot in your life. Um, I... I don't have you completely memorized, but you've been, you know, been a doctor and taught so probably would thousands be safe to say? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Can, can you tell us just a little bit more about yourself and what your website is? So it's from you. All right. My website is www.tripleHproject.com. And uh, I'm a physician scientist. I have taught in many medical schools, teaching medical students and residents. That means younger doctors that are training to be um, to specialize. And um, I have been doing research on human hope since I was a medical student. And um, yeah. the instrument that I I developed even as a medical student for measuring hope uh, was adopted by uh, Coca-Cola, General Motors, uh, Veteran Administration, and many other institutions. I got it as a, a project uh, that was funded by the uh, NIH and uh, the National uh, uh, medical fellowship and uh, mm -hmm. since then i have been doing research on hope and then when happiness became a big deal after martin seligman became the president of the american psychological association that's when i started to find out why the psychologists are zeroing in more on hope, on happiness, rather than hope. Because hope is what is missing when people attempt suicide. Right. So I would think that hope is more important than happiness. So I was trying to find out, are we talking about the same thing? Can you have one without the other? And that is what led me to the research and that uh, brought about the happiness formula that we are talking about today. Let me go back to you in med school and ask you why happiness, why the topic of happiness, what sparked that moment for you to come go down this path? Okay. In medical school, you rotate through different sections. Um, after your preclinical pre years, you go through pediatrics, you go through surgery, you go through psychiatry. When I was rotating through psychiatry, that's how I met two patients who were admitted for attempted suicide. Mm. And that's how I became very interested in the study of human hope. Hope was my study. I was not studying happiness yes, yeah, you said that. until the movement of positive psychology came on with Martin Seligman. And that is when I started to ask, okay. why happiness? Why not hope? Since hope is what is absent when people attempt suicide. Yep. And that is how I found the relationship between hope and happiness that led to the to the formula. You know, if I can personally just tell you a little bit of a story here about hope. <clears throat> my father was a, uh, he's a topic of my first book, Percolate, Let Your Best Self Filter Through, which was a Hay House book. And it talked all about him having a stroke at age 60 
back in 2004 and surviving and um, surviving things that people just don't generally survive. Um, they called the ICU crew called him an ICU warrior. He, 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 they put him in a coma and you know, all the things that go with multiple strokes and brain bleeds and things like that. And he survived from 2004 to 2018. My goodness. And phenomenal. No, no uh, memory loss, no anything, just had field cuts um, and mobile, a little bit of mobility issues as a result and things like that, but nothing to, you know, uh, nothing to correspond to the level of stroke injury that had happened to him. But anyway, my father taught me so much about hope in those moments. Um, and that whole entire time of him being ill, hope, I think, is what hope and faith carried him through. Absolutely. It wasn't necessarily about happiness because every day certainly wasn't happy, but he had a lot of hope. And he he would uh, cling to hope. So all think, humans do. We are all hoping. Remember now that we are all obsessed about the future. Okay, we are all obsessed about the future. Sure. And hope is the only antidote for any anxiety about the future. There's nothing else you can do. No matter how much money you have, how much opportunity you have today, nobody knows about tomorrow. And yeah. hope is what gives you the informed courage to live on. Yeah. Did you have any personal experiences other than that moment in school with your own struggles or confidence for that matter with hope and happiness and things like that? Have you ever had a moment where you're like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. I'm going to cling to hope or whatever. Have you had, have, do you have personal things that you would yes, share? Sir. If you don't want to, you can just definitely, take a hard pass. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> much after that, as a medical student, a young medical student, you know, I thought, you know, life was easy. I've always passed all my exams. I'm in medical school. Um, in fact, I was enrolled in two degrees. I was studying biochemistry, oh, getting wow. a PhD in biochemistry and an MD for medicine. And so when I saw people that have attempted suicide and they just thought that uh, today is just like yesterday, Tomorrow is not going to be any different. Was the use? I was very, very um, well um, became very well connected with the idea of hope. So that if we can detect a decrease in hope early enough, we can prevent suicide. That was the whole idea about studying hope, and I made a scale for measuring hope. But Thank later you. on in life, of course. I have many instances uh, yeah. where hope has been very, very uh, good for me to keep. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. grounding, almost like gratitude and so forth. I've, <clears throat> I've nearly, uh, well, I have lost my life to um, and come back from uh, life-threatening food allergic reactions. I have uh, terrible life-threatening food allergies to peanuts, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish, and have a have a medic alert on and the whole bit. Um, and it's, oh boy, I don't think I knew hope and faith and gratitude and all those things until my father got really sick. Um, I felt like I, I was a victim for the longest time. And, and there's, there's so many worse things that can happen to you and so forth, food allergies, you know, but for me, it was, it was crushing. And so, um, and I just, I know that feeling of, of clinging to, to hope and, things that are uh, like almost like a higher vibrational energy than the low to, to guide you through those moments and so forth. Like I'm thinking about like lives you must have saved over the years with all of the things that you've done. You just must be like this. Oh. <laughs> I've saved lives. <laughs> oh. the, the, uh, the, the pleasure has been mine. I've been yeah. fortunate and, uh, but uh, as you know now, countries are now trying, um, as proposed by the United Nations, 
to use the happiness of its citizens as the barometer for measuring how well the country is doing. Because how happy, how happy the citizens are is the true test of how the country is doing. More yeah. so than GDP. You probably. I could I can see that if you're walking around. So who's so, the happiest? <laughs> so that's what we that's what countries are trying to use now. Yeah. So this happiness formula uh, comes at a time where we really need to measure happiness. People talk about happiness, but there's no way, a good way of measuring it yeah. until this yeah. formula. Yeah. So tell, so tell us about this. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you at all. Sorry. No, Keep going. <laughs> that's just, that's just me. Um, do you, who's the, do you know who the happiest country is or city? Like, is there, is it happening? Like where we truly are measuring these things and they there's results. There is what they call the happiness, world happiness report that <laughs> comes out every year. It just came out. The newest one just came out March 20th, just oh. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. But the way they are used, the method they are using for measuring happiness is very highly flawed and that is why i am challenging them telling them to use a better method such as is in this book yeah um, they are just asking people basically how satisfied do you feel with your life from zero to ten mm. and people you know say seven eight nine ten five three uh, and I'm saying that is very too simplistic yeah. and very poorly informative and hugely, hugely rudimentary as a way of measuring happiness because uh, the person who is happy is the only one who knows how happy he or she is. And when you just ask people, how are you doing? Which we ask people every day. They say, oh, I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Oh, everything is fine. People don't even think about it. They just answer it. But happiness has causes. There are things that provoke happiness. How do those things come about? And that is what this book is all about. If you know your score of hope and your score of hunger, hunger meaning compelling desire. If your hope is higher than your hunger, you are happy. Mm -hmm. If your hunger is higher than your hope, you will be unhappy. Most people are in the middle with moderate hope and, mo and uh, moderate hunger. But those people with very high hope and low hunger, they, those are ones we call flourishing individuals. And those with very overwhelming hunger, but low hope, those are the languishing individuals. And in between are most people. So knowing where you are in the spectrum is very important. Yeah. And how then, do we know? How do we get that? Can, and this can be quantified by, in the book, yeah. there is a hope scale and a hunger scale. Once you, once you know your hope scale and you divide your hope scale by your hunger scale, what you get is your personal happiness index, which is called PHI. For the first time, we can now quantify happiness and you know where you are. So you would really have to sit people down and ask them these questions and really spend 10 minutes with them or so, or maybe more to maybe not that much, but to actually, to actually come up with a, the score, the result, and then it's call the people together. Five minutes. It yeah. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yes. But more than one question, are you happy? Exactly. Because you, you can't get that much information just 
just for my half, half the people lie anyway. They go, yeah, I'm great. Thanks. I, and also, <laughs> people, sometimes people boast. Oh, yeah, I'm okay? great. In the West. Yeah. Now, in the East, uh, in Asia, people are trained to be modest when they are assessing themselves. So they in the in in, in Asia and in the Eastern uh, uh, cultures, people are likely to say five or six right. from zero to ten, but in the West, they might say eight, nine, or ten. Right. Also, there are people who see that as a political, as a patriotic issue, and when you say how satisfied are you are in the country you are in can say nine or ten as a patriotic issue yeah. some people will see it as a political statement as a time to <clears throat> say how bad the government is doing and say a three or four okay so there are so many things uh that are there that gives a distorted picture yeah. uh finland for the past six years has been declare the happiest country in the world yeah. but because they are using the wrong method i don't think finland is number one the finnish people they have the highest they are the highest users of anti-depressants in oh. europe wow their suicide rate in finland is higher than the suicide rate of Af Afghanistan, which is supposedly the unhappiest country in the world. See? And and so, so, so we, the method they are know. using is definitely <laughs> wrong. Yes. Yeah. So um, what about, okay, so we know the formula. It's, it's right on the on the book. And then the questions are in the book to, to follow through. So you can do this yourself. Takes so about if, five minutes. Yeah, but what about if um yeah, it's not complicated at all. I just looked at it again. Um, <clears throat> what if there's outside factors at play here? Um, like if you're asking me how hopeful, happiness, and happy I am and, and so forth during COVID. You know, what if there's a outside force happening? Um am I are you likely to see different answers in those moments? Yeah. You know, it took me 30 years to get out, to get to this. Yeah. So all the factors are in. In this equation, your hopes, your assets, your hungers, and your aspirations are plugged into the, into the equation to find your personal happiness index. Yeah. So everybody has different issues, different hungers, different hopes, different assets, different, different aspirations. Yours is plugged in into the equation and we get your happiness index. Yeah. It's not just uh, asking you how hopeful are you. In fact, right. the, 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 the word happiness does not even appear in the, uh, in the tool. Okay. Um, Do, does this change throughout our lifetime? For example, if you, I'm 55 now. If you ask me this, these questions and so forth now, my answer might be different than when I'm, you know, 20. Yeah, it depends on your life. Yeah. What is going on around you and inside you. That's what determines. If those things change, if they change, of course, your score will also go to change. Yeah. Your score is not going to change if you find your remote control. <laughs> or, or you lose yeah. your car key. When something, um, a life relevant uh, occurrence happens, yeah, a life changing event, yes, that will affect your what a, personal happiness index. What about if I, I know I'm asking you different scenarios and things like that, and you'll we'll probably come back to what you're saying, but I'm going to ask anyway. Um, what if I'm feel like I've got that kind of feeling like something's off or I need to change something or I, I need to do something, but I don't know quite what it is, you know, that kind of feeling. Can this help sort through that if I'm feeling less, you know, 
less hopeful and so forth, will it show it on that? If I've got that feeling going on, if I'm like, okay, I need to get, no, I've been married 25 years. So, but I'm going to use this as an example. If I said, okay, I need to get divorced or I need to move or I need to do this or that. Will those types of things show up in this as hunger? Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Because uh, what... And I'm not getting divorced. Don't worry, everybody. No. <laughs> yeah, no. I just use uh, that. You know, <laughs> we, in this, uh, we don't even ask about marriage. Are you married? How much do you make? Uh, uh, how many children you have? We don't even ask that. Really? We okay. Ask something. The question that I ask as something that's applicable to everybody. This scale can be used to assess a millionaire who lives in London or a fisherman who lives in a, fil a village in Kenya. Love it. This same scale can be used. Now, you've heard about miserable millionaires and happy pe peasants. Right. Okay, so money is not, money is important in happiness, but it's just not the only thing. Right. right. Yeah, no, I, I love this. It's So where, where are we going to see you next? Are we going to see you in, in the political realm? <laughs> where are we going to see you next to get this implemented worldwide? Well, uh, I'm not into into politics. I, yeah, I'm not really uh, either. Yeah. But I, I, My, I don't. <laughs> yeah, what I do now, I'm the CEO of uh, Happiness Project USA. We train and certify happiness coaches. Oh, nice. Just like you were saying a while ago, somebody who wants a direction in life and he doesn't know how things are going, you can go to a happiness coach. Yeah. A happiness coach will measure will give you the questionnaire and you will know your personal happiness index. And so you know where you are and where you want to go. Yeah. And the happiness coach can work with you to increase your overall subjective well-being. I love that. Now you have three granddaughters, right? I'm reading this right too. You have two sons and then three granddaughters. Does do do you ask kids things like this or do they get the one question? Are you happy? Or do they get no questions at all? These, uh, these hope, these, um, happiness formula is for adults. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. Years and above. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's so there are ways, there are ways of measuring the happiness of uh, children. Children. Yeah. They are now ends. These just, they are just about now. <laughs> Nowians. Did you say yeah, now? Just now. It's yeah. <laughs> when, you, that... when you when you when you answer their questions, they have food and comfort. You answer their questions. Uh and um they have somebody they trust that will be there in times of emergency. So the five human hungers, if you satisfy it for the children they are happy the five human hungers yeah. but the five human hungers being met is not enough for adults because right. adults are always talking about tomorrow and that's how hope comes in yeah yeah we get anxious don't we yes. you know i think this would be such a cool book or a second book for teenagers preteen like 12 to 18 because there is such an alarming rate of, un, I'm just going to call it, I don't know what, I don't know what the scientific term was for it or anything, but uh, anxiety, depression, suicide rates, unhappiness, and so forth. And this might be just a lovely thing to have in a doctor's office. I have, uh, I have many people who, who bought five. Yeah. And it's just not just for them, it goes to give to nephew and nieces. Yeah. 17, 18 year old, especially those who are just graduating from high school and getting into college to have the right mindset about important things in life and to do the right thing. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a good, I'm just thinking just as a mother of four sons too, this is, this is a lovely parenting tool to sit down and 
you know, maybe once a year you say, you know, how are you doing? And, you know, here's, here's something, especially for scientific brains. I have four scientists or three scientists and, and one leadership guru, and they love this kind of stuff where it makes sense and it's logical and it's quantifiable and things like that. They, they love this stuff. And I think, um, I, I think this is a, a, a fabulous conversation piece. Um, because as parents, we're always trying to, you know, are you really happy? Are you okay? You know, those types of things. And um, it just seemed, I don't know if that, if that's your intended use or anything like that, but I could see a use like that for it. Yeah. The, the, the reason why I wrote the book about four reasons. Number one, I wanted to share with everybody the very simple formula that I discovered by chance. I didn't set out looking for a way to measure happiness. I was doing research on hope when this formula surfaced. Yep. So I want to share this formula, very simple formula that allows us to measure happiness, which has been very difficult. Yeah. That's number one. Number two, I have a five minute questionnaire, a tool that can differentiate flourishing individuals from a languishing individual. And in between those two extremes can determine who is happy, very happy, unhappy, or very unhappy. So this is a tool for monitoring anybody yourself or somebody else to see how you are progressing in your well-being and happiness. Uh, so, and I also wrote it for happiness coaches to, to telling them uh, the tool to use and how to help people who have different issues about hope, hunger and happiness. Yes, yeah. yeah. And the fourth reason? The or fourth reason that? is for individuals, individuals to tell you a basic routine that you can use every day to find and sustain a flourishing life. It's all there in the book. Yeah, it's a great book. All right. Well, thank you. I, I just want to thank you for being with us. It's been wonderful to have you on Best Ever You. Are you going to hold it up too? You have your book? <laughs> I don't know if you have it handy or not. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> yeah, you. beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, everybody, you can um, buy this book. It's called The Happiness Formula, and the, and the tagline is a scientific, groundbreaking ap approach to happiness and personal fulfillment. And as I'm reading it, I want to make sure people know that it it's, doesn't read like a textbook and it doesn't read like math or, or anything like that. Um, so don't be afraid of the word equation or anything like that. It's it's um, it's very it's very well worded and very. And if you go to Amazon and Barnes Noble, you can see the reviews. Yes, uh, the reviews are, are very are encouraging. outstanding, aren't they? People are enjoying it and yeah, and that's so. Yeah, I love it when our 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 best ever you network has people on like you you know such as yourself and we get behind the author and buy the book and do the reviews and things like that. So we'll see what we can do for you. But it's been absolutely wonderful getting to know you and uh, and thank you for all of your wisdom and for writing such a great book. I look forward forward to reading the rest of it. I just got the book, so I'm I'm excited to dive in. And um, if we have questions, should we approach you on your website? Do do you, on my website, uh, you can get me on uh, Psychology Today. I'm a contributor uh, yeah. to Psychology Today. Uh, you can get me on my website. Uh, you can get me on LinkedIn. Oh, good. And, yeah, so. and you're on Best Ever You now. I saw, I think we just, I, I can't remember, but I think we just put an article of yours in our magazine. So uh, I can't, I can't totally say that for sure, but I think I remember your name in the magazine <laughs> and, and trying to pronounce it. And I think we got it now. So wonderful to meet you. I hope you'll come back um, mm -hmm. and uh, we can do, you know, tinier clips of shows about happiness, hope, and, 
and other things that you want to talk about because it's, uh, it's great. You for having me. Thank yeah, you. For thank having you. Me. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us. And again, here's the book. And uh, Amazon's a great place. But like he was saying, Barnes and Noble Books a Million. It's, it's available wherever books are sold. So thank yeah. you all for being with us and, right. and take care and have a great day, everybody. Thank you.